follow press. I, I follow my heart, my instinct, the feelings. When I have goosebumps in a club, or when I see a band, or or, or when I meet somebody very interesting, I, I'm not reading. Yeah, this is cool. This is cool. This is cool. I tried that, and it made me nuts because I was listening and I said, "This is not cool." Because what I what I, what I did find is that they're not very critical. It's hype. It's you know, one day it's this. 24 hours later is that, so I'm wasting my time reading it. And if I read it, I'm, I will follow everybody. And I don't want to follow, I want to meet you by accident. Um, I want to be in a, in a club or whatever, or see a band by accident. Even in the beginning, we, we were against you know, the stream. We were trying to release records which were not really confirm on what the market wanted. And it's, it's very hard for you to understand now, because if you hear the classics, Beltram, they're typical dance records. But at the time they were released, it was, it was a shock. Uh, when we released Aphex Twin, it was a shock. It was really, you know, what are they doing? Um, you know, again with Boom Boom Satellite, same thing, it was punk, punk jazz electro. Um, but what I do feel is that I have much more freedom to do that now. And um, you have fantastic, there is a million good uh, techno labels in the world, a million good house labels, so a lot of good dance labels. RNS is, 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 is there to shock people, to surprise people, and even to shock ourselves. You know, what are we doing? <laughs> we just released this. To, to, to keep it for us, especially for me, interesting and vibrant. Because I can release a techno record and the next techno record and the next techno record and I'm gonna fall in sleep after release to it. Okay, fine. It's okay in a club. There I go, you know, I'll go party with you, I will dance, whatever. It's techno, drum and bass, I'm on the floor. But for me, releasing and the label is, uh, is, is, is for me personally something artistic. We, we really want to push, push boundaries, we really want to test the waters. You know, when, when we stopped, when I stopped in 1999, basically, uh, I was bored with the industry. I was really, really bored with the, how business was run and blah, blah, blah. And also the music and techno music was on repeat. It was always the same. And um, I always wanted to be R&S since, since the beginning, to be a very eclectic label. You know, if, if I wanted to do a jazz album, I would, I would love to have released a jazz album. Uh, it was not only about dance, of course, w we came in with dance and with techno and everything had a name and everything grew. And um, at that point where, where I was really experimenting with other things, it was not really accepted by, by our fans. So I took a step back for many reasons. Um, I didn't want to come back to the music industry at all because I, had a, I was breeding horses at that time. So it was all an accident, basically, because I was not listening to music from 2000 to 2006, nothing. Didn't go to one party, music on silence, no radio, nothing. Only the horses, nature. And um, people that worked for me for 20 years came to the farm. You know, my lawyer and somebody that worked in our office, yeah, I should start again and, you know, this whole story. And I said, no, 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 no. You know, we, we had a full due, you know, at the farm. The horses were outside the town. They said, look at me. And, and we went for dinner. We had a, two bottles of wine. And I said, okay, fine, let's do it. <laughs> and this was the beginning of this whole mala, you know, bass music started then. You know, later dubstep and and certainly there was a trigger. I said, "Ah, oh, this is very interesting." Mm -hmm. 
musically, nowadays it has become much more commercial, of course. Much, much more money involved and bigger lights and brrr, bigger, 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 bigger. For me, it's still about it's this, this, this small club of 500 people where re a DJ really can play stuff and you know you don't have to uh, you don't have to rock 5,000 or 10,000 people because then you're limited in what you can do. Musically, though, I think it's far more interesting because you have much more subcultures. There is a bigger diversity. You know, a lot of young kids making making music and, and not necessarily dance music uh, or house music, it, it, it you know, can be extremely eclectic. So in that perspective, I, I prefer today more than a thousand years ago when I started. <laughs> Music has a time and place. So in the morning, I'm not going to listen to a full-on pumping techno track. I'm, I might listen to Miles Davis or even classical music. Um, if I feel romantic, maybe I'll listen to Ben Howard or Fink or uh, you know some folk music. And then in the evening, when you know the friends are there, come on, let's pump it up. <laughs> so you know what I mean. It, I cannot listen to the same music non-stop it really bores me very quick and the, the, the and I think if you would do that you would really be like a horse which that cannot go left and right you would not hear see anything interesting uh, uh, one one of the most interesting artists at the moment is Nils Fram for, for me he's, he, he, he's, he's a star he's a superstar and it has nothing to do with, with a, it's, it's piano, it's classical piano, and so if you, if I would only listen to techno music, maybe I would have missed Nils from or others. I don't, I don't want to. It's impossible to follow everything, but I want to miss as less as possible.